Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. <laughs> That's nice. Just made that, but whatever. <laughs> a lot of these decisions and things that made this list had to do with traveling with two dogs. It's, uh, it's one of those things that kind of makes every sailor, I think, a little uneasy, especially sailing at night. This ended up being really important for us and being probably the hardest thing to find. Whether you're in the market for a boat or you're just kind of curious and want to see like what our house is really like. We are Mike and Taylor. And these are our dogs, Penny and Lucy. We sold our home and nearly everything we owned, moved aboard a 40-foot boat, and sailed from Seattle. This is the story of us making our way. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different and actually something that we've been meaning to do for a really, really long time but haven't gotten around to it. So we're super excited to finally give you guys a tour of Via, our floating home. Via is a 2004 Caliber 40 LRC that we found and purchased in the fall of 2020 in Bellingham, Washington. She's a long, thin keel with a 5-2 draft blue water design boat. She's a cutter rig with a removable inner forestay, so she can sail like a sloop whenever she feels like it. To start, we'll go back to the beginning when I first got the idea or started to realize that there was a thing called cruising, and I started reading everything I could, watching every YouTube video I could, and learning everything I could about cruising boats and you know what maybe made a good long distance cruising boat. And after like literally years of extensive research, kind of started to compile a list of the things that at least I felt were the things that I wanted in a cruising boat. They're not necessarily the things that you need and they're not going to be right for everybody, but these were the things that were at least important to me. And then when we started discussing actually doing this, you know, we started to kind of talk about what were going to be the important things to us. We really wanted to just preface this whole thing with a major disclaimer that there's no right answer with any of this stuff. And I'm sure a lot of you watching probably have totally like very different ideas about a good thing to have versus a bad thing to have. And that's totally okay. We just wanted to put this disclaimer out and say that this is not like the way to look for a cruising boat. This is our way. This is the stuff that we decided that we really wanted. There's going to be a lot of different opinions on this. And I'm sure if you watch a bunch of different boat tour videos and a bunch of different like um, buying guides, you're going to get a lot of different information. And that's cool. That's the way it should be. There's options available. Yeah. And you so. see a ton of different kinds of boats out here just to prove that you can do this on a million different kinds oh, of boats. Totally. There's people who have gone a lot farther with a lot less boat. So yeah. We decided to divide this video up into four different categories for you to make it a little bit more digestible. The things that Mike originally and then when I came on, on board decided that was just kind of a non-negotiable. It was like a need to have. Second category is... Preferences. Things that we wanted but wouldn't make or break our decision to buy a boat. Nice to have. Third category is things that we don't really love about our boat. We don't have a whole lot to complain about with this boat. We got really lucky when we found her, but... Thought we'd include it. It's a boat, and there are things that we would change if we could, yeah. so. And then the last category is just like pleasant surprises, stuff that we weren't even looking for, didn't even consider, wasn't really on our radar, but this boat has, and we're pleasantly surprised by it, and we really enjoy. So whether you're in the market for a boat, or you're just kind of curious, wanna see like what we're, like what our house is really like, yeah. you know? I hope you enjoy this tour. Yeah. I kind of feel like we're on MTV Cribs and I'm super excited about it, so. Big Snoop D O double G. I want to welcome you all to my house, the dog house. Slide in. Come on in. Come on in, guys. Let's get going. <laughs> For all you gearheads out there, we have included an extensive list of all of the specs regarding systems and equipment in the description box down below. Are you ready? Penny, can you even? <laughs> okay, where should we start? Let's start in the cockpit and then move down the companionway so you kind of get the feel coming Ooh, down. Oh, it, okay. Yeah. So this is obviously our cockpit. We've got a solar panel here, a solar panel right above us. This is obviously the helm. Grill. 
Captain's chairs. Captain's chairs. We've got two paddle boards stored right here. Paddle board stored right here. That's hard to say. Dinghy davits, not the strongest. Probably gonna have to replace those someday, but they work for now. Solid lifelines leading up to the pulpit. From our helm station, you can reach both primary winches. We have strong pad eyes. Attaching safety tools to you know, the helm's person can reach the manual bilge pump. We have three big scuppers for drainage if we ever do get pooped. So it's not perfect, but this is one of the better cockpits actually that we saw. Under Little Miss Lucy here is our lazarette. This is a giant sloppy storage container that also has some access to the engine. Obviously there's a lot of storage. It is just full of stuff right now, but it is also kind of a really nice equipment room. It's just big enough for me to cram myself into, but from there I can get to the fuel system, a lot of the plumbing, the back of the engine, the batteries, steering quadrant, the furnace, and my 15 million other things. have seen the inside of our boat a million times so we just kind of wanted to give you a bit of a better kind of tour around some of the details maybe you haven't seen so this is our quarter berth slash other room of shit Look at all <laughs> you guys it's really full right now we try to keep it as organized as we can and just not have it not be a big pile um, but you can of course actually take all this out and it's a usable birth and we've had people sleeping here before so it's it's pretty good but right now it's just a big room of shit so this is our second head so these rooms close off and then there's a door between there that opens and closes too so this becomes a shower i don't know what else to say about that really Our third head, <laughs> the dog's head. So this is our living room, our dining room, our office, our entertainment room. I don't know whatever kind of rooms people got, but this is where it all happens. The gym. The gym, yeah, this is it. Along with some storage, the membranes for the water maker are under here. And that's about it. <laughs> Even though we don't have a ton of storage in the, like, the galley itself, it kind of spills out into the rest of the boat here. So the back of all of these things are storage, right? So we've got buckets with various things and this is all food as well and so is this one so basically this whole area is spillover kind of dry pantry stuff that can actually hold like a fair amount of, of stuff and this all just gets put away we have gotten quite a few questions about these cushion covers they are elastic backed lined easily removable and machine washable we had them made for us by sensible home decor on etsy and are extremely happy with them even two years in we've got kind of dog stuff under here and then there's a little galley spillover over here i mean that's a that's a basket full of onions and potatoes right there so oh and this is all like dry goods in here so even though we don't really have the storage in the galley itself, you know, it works out. We can kind of tuck things away in different places. Beer is down there, booze is in there, and that's the most important thing. Very important. <laughs> So this is our bedroom up here and it's got basically a queen size bed, which is great. And it's got pretty good storage actually. Um, there's a huge amount of storage underneath this bed, which is the actual biggest pain in the ass to get to ever, but it's there. So we could store some stuff that we don't really need that often there. And then all of this business is all storage. We've got a hanging closet here, little doodads here. There's drawers and stuff down here.
We got some bilge access under here, as well as to the bottom of our keel step mast. It's a bilge. <laughs> Even if we never cross an ocean or you know if for some reason we never ended up going very far I would rather have a boat that was built to do those things and we never really put the boat up to the to that sort of level of test than a boat that really wasn't designed for that it just seemed like a, a, a big safety measure for us so that was our preference but we do have friends who have sailed coastal cruising boats across oceans you know it's not an absolute necessity but for us it's a lot of peace of mind. Another really important thing, and if you're living aboard and cruising is good systems access, it makes such a big difference. If it's hard to get to, you're just not gonna wanna maintain it and then you're gonna have things break down. So good systems access. Right under the stairs. And as you guys have probably seen, these whole stairs lift up and come out so this is all wide open yeah this is all wide open there is an access panel on the port side for getting to the water pump and back side of the alternator there's also access to the back of the engine the entire rear panel comes off so down through the lazarette you have full access to the back side of the engine and the propeller shaft. who remembers our propeller shaft drama yes all right let's see pushing is am i gonna be able to get the coupling on So something else that was on our need to have list was this, sort of a swim platform slash easy access to the water. There's a platform and a little step here. It's not the biggest swim platform out there, but uh, it's bigger than some and it was kind of on our need to have list, not only because it just makes bow life that much more enjoyable being able to get in and out of the water with ease, but obviously because of the kids! Hey guys! You might notice a recurring theme in this video. A lot of these decisions and things that made this list had to do with traveling with two dogs. And this is definitely one of them. So another thing that I, I it didn't even really make my list until we started looking at boats and I realized how actually valuable this was was the structure, the size, everything about the companion way. So this whole opening right here. And what we found was on a lot of boats that it's kind of a ladder situation to get down into in your boat. Now, there are plenty of dogs out there that I'm sure are really good at climbing ladders. These two are not some of them. So we needed a situation where they could come and go with ease and, and just kind of was more of a step situation than a ladder situation. This ended up being one of the hardest things for us to find. Yeah. It basically would eliminate at almost any center cockpit boat, yeah. the vast majority of even aft cockpit boats, this ended up being really important for us and being probably the hardest thing to find. But yeah, man, we saw some boats that we really fell in love with, but we just stood there and stared at these like ladders to get up and we we're like, there's just no way. I mean, we're gonna have to strap these guys into like a harness 17 times a day. So this is like, this is a big deal, actually. This was a very, very big deal for us and part of the massive appeal of this boat, so. Good girl. Okay. On a lot of boats, you know, you gotta go up to hoist all your sails, you gotta go up to reef, you gotta go up to just do everything. And finding a boat that had everything lead back into here, that was that was really important for, for sure. So that was on the list. Then after the companionway steps, the second hardest thing for us to find was standing headroom for me. I'm six foot four, so even most boat, even a lot of 45 foot boats don't have standing headroom for me, even in like the galley. So we were actually really pleasantly surprised when we came aboard Via and found that I can, except for doorways and like some handholds and stuff, I can walk through the entire boat, even the forward head. Even in the shower, I can stand up. Barely! You just, yeah. <laughs> Along the same lines was finding a boat with a berth that was long enough for me to actually fully stretch out. And this boat actually has a great berth and I got plenty of room. <sighs> Oh 
That's nice. Just made that, but whatever. <laughs> So now we're moving to the things that are kind of nice to have. These are just sort of preferences, stuff that we were just kind of keeping an eye out for. They were not make or break things, but they were like, mm, we, if we could find it, it would be nice. Yeah. So these are things like uh, an encapsulated keel as opposed to a, a bolt-on keel, a rudder that's hung on a full skeg, a double head stay rig or a cutter rig. accessible from the deck as opposed to from down below. Ooh, there's trash in there. It smells. <laughs> Via's got a nice big anchor locker. It's also a great place to store fenders and trash. trash. <laughs> so our anchor locker goes all the way down below the water line. It's self-draining. relatively large galley was something that was on our nice to have list and they don't know if we nailed it <laughs> but it works so i could take you guys on a little tour of our galley here if you're interested so we've got a three burner stove this is on propane we've got an oven that is a little bit larger than like a convection toaster oven uh, but you know what it gets the job done sort of oils and vinegars and things and here and then we've got some storage in here and we literally just have our dishes here and some food here. This guy is our fridge and it struggles a little bit sometimes. A refrigerator here, this portion is a freezer, but then there's sort of a false bottom that pulls out and it's all extra freezer space down there. So that's really cool as well. I was a little bit worried about the storage in the kitchen at first. I was thinking that we were going to have to add in cabinets or something. I was just uh, having a hard time imagining how we were going to fit everything, but we do. It actually is all right. You know, yeah. we added in some places to put produce and a little net back here for some lighter kind of bags of bread or chips or something, but Pots it actually and, works yeah. out. Pots and pans down here and sort of some odds and ends in here. It's not very well. That's ordered. actually pretty big. It is. It's not very well organized for you guys at all, but it's kind of got everything in some drawers here. So most of these are for the water maker. We've got two water maker pumps. So these are the brine discharge for both of those. This guy is designed to pump out any water that's sitting at the bottom of our refrigerator or freezer. This is the sample or test line for the water maker. And this guy is kind of cool because it's connected to this foot pump here which pumps in salt water. So you've got a way to bring in water if you don't want to use water from the water maker. Although there is a switch that will allow you to use this pump, manual foot pump to run fresh water if your water pressure goes out. So that's the spigot situation happening. Oh yeah. And then this is filtered water. I just didn't want to talk about that problem right there. It's like, that cilantro just gave up last night and I haven't gotten around to it. But. All right, so there are only a couple things here that we don't love, love, love about this boat. It's a really short list, but we just wanna walk you through it because it's only fair. If we're showing all the cool features that we love, it's probably, you know, fair that we share the stuff that we go ah, every once in a while over. So these are those things. I think the only thing that I routinely curse about this boat is I'm not crazy about the design on the side decks. Two things primarily, the, the side decks have a really strong pitch to them, which is great for shedding water, but it's just as good at shedding people and dogs. I think if they had flattened that out a little bit, it would have made for a safer side deck. Along with that, the location of the shrouds, they're pretty much dead center in the middle of the side deck. And so walking forward here, you're always either trying to figure out how to slide along the outside or do some kind of weave through or duck under them. And especially if you have anything in your hands, it just kind of creates- Or if you're in weather. It's, you know, trying to like haul like a sail up here or something like that, these make it really, really hard. Great for stubbing your toe. Also great to stub your toe. I wish they had just kind of located these a little bit differently. I will say though that the chain plate access on these is really, really good. So to inspect these chain plates, 
that part is really nice. They're easy to, to access and pull. And the other side deck thing is the traveler cars. Taylor exemplified this the other day when she stubbed her toe really hard on this guy moving forward. Again, they're kind of in the middle of the side deck. Someone is for sure going to talk about, and this is kind of what Caliber said, they wanted the chain plates in farther for tighter sheeting angles. The thing is, this isn't that weatherly of a boat. And even if we're sailing 45 degrees apparent, which is about as tight as we get, we're not right up against the shrouds. So I think they could have moved them out, moved them in, something, anything else to make these side decks a little more easy to navigate. You might have also noticed that we have some rubber squares scattered on the deck as a short-term solution for another big pet peeve of this boat, our almost non-existent non-skid. The decks can become quite slick with even the littlest bit of moisture. So for feet and paws alike, these help create some grip while moving about for now. This is our little nav station. This nav station is a little weird. You kind of hear this a lot about this boat. It's not really all that usable. I can sit in here. I don't ever choose to. <laughs> all right, so we've talked about our need to haves. We talked about the nice to haves. We talked about the things that we don't really love, which is a very short list, really. Here are the things that we were not expecting that we really love about this boat. So they're kind of like the fun features of this specific boat. <laughs> People know anything about caliber 40 LRCs, they always talk about the tanks and it, it is great. We have huge tanks. I think we carry 212 gallons of diesel and 178 gallons of water. I do wish those were switched. It's a lot of diesel and I'd like to have a little bit more water, but it's really nice to have. I think even cooler than that though, is their integral fiberglass tanks. So what that means is we never have to worry about our tanks rusting or really leaking at all. They install these nice inspection ports. This is our larger of our two water tanks. So there are two water tanks and there are two diesel tanks. So that's good in case one gets contaminated, you always have a backup. Uh, should we pause for inserting some clips of when we contaminated our diesel tank. Oh yeah. <laughs> After making the decision that we're not leaving out to Nia Bay tomorrow. After all, we have to deal with this chain plate issue. In thinking that we were going to be returning to Bellingham to have our fabricator make a new chain plate, we were getting the boat ready to actually take off today. Um, and things just went from bad to worse. Uh, we had a empty water tank, so we we're just going to top off the tanks before we pull out of this marina and head back up to Bellingham. And sort of in our frazzled headspace, Mike went to fill the tanks and put a few minutes of full throttle hose running before he realized that he didn't have the hose in the water tank, he had the hose in the diesel tank. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> but we have a second diesel yeah. tank, so the one downside of that, I guess, is we don't have any bilge storage at yeah, all. Yeah, we don't have um, that. Because it's all tanks. Another thing that we love about this boat is it has a watertight collision bulkhead. So the anchor locker and holding tank are completely separate from the rest of the boat back. So if we were to strike something out at sea, water is only going to ingress to that bulkhead, assuming you don't do damage behind the bulkhead. But it's a really nice peace of mind to have, uh, especially when you're out there sailing at night. It's uh, it's one of those things that kind of makes every sailor, I think, a little uneasy, especially sailing at night. Speaking of the days just preceding the big left turn, we happened to stumble upon this in a boatyard in Port Townsend, Washington, as we were preparing to head out on our first ever open ocean sail. Pretty much your worst nightmare. A boat had hit something at night 500 miles offshore on a passage from Hawaii to Seattle. Their collision bulkheads allowed them to make it safely back into port and survive what I'm sure was a horrifying ordeal. Having a collision bulkhead is a very nice bit of security. Some other sweet features of VIA include great ventilation with seven hatches and 12 port lights, all of which open, a self-tacking staysail, and an extendable couch that makes for a great on-passage berth or a comfy lounge for movie nights. Oh, hi, didn't see you there. <laughs> One of the other cool things about this boat was that it just came really well equipped. If you're in the boat market, you'll probably find some are more equipped than others. It came really well stocked for like cruising equipment and like kind of comfort stuff. 
Like we've got screens for all the windows. We've got a screen for the companionway. We've got big screens that like hang out around the um, cockpit, which is really nice. We've got a whole boat cover, like a sunshade. A solid, well cared for, professionally cared for boat, actually. So to finish up, would we buy via this boat again? We're now like what, a year and a half or two years into this whole thing of living aboard yeah. and traveling. Almost 5,000 miles sailed. Yeah. And I think it's a resounding yes. We've been really, really happy with it. It's like, it's served us really well. I mean, I knock on wood, I know there's gonna be, there just like shit happens, but we've been really lucky as far as boat problems and it's just done us good. And it feels like a tank. Yeah. It feels solid. AF. It is a solidly built, well thought out boat. Yeah. I mean, it's just a really yeah. good all around cruising boat. And one of the best things I can say about it is it would be extremely difficult for us to actually upgrade without spending a, a lot. lot more money on a boat. <laughs> a um, lot. Because there just aren't that like many boats that would check the boxes. Three um, times as much. Yeah, and be as well built and well designed. And you, we, we would need a lot more money to, to do better than this. So that's a pretty good endorsement, I think. I hope you enjoyed this tour. I hope it was, it's also, side note, really difficult to show like absolutely everything and do like a super thorough tour of like all systems and all things. But if there's something that you like specifically would like to see that we didn't cover in this video, like leave a comment and we'll see if we can do another one for you guys. But yeah, I can talk about boats all day long. So if anyone has any questions or something, definitely leave a comment. We actually do read all the comments on our videos. Uh, and if you like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. That really helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. It's free. It is free. Should we end the way the cribs, every cribs did? How did they end? I'm gonna show y'all to the door. And the same way y'all came in is the same way y'all gonna go out. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for coming through here. Get out, go. Get out, get out of here. here. Get out. Get. <laughs> Get off, yes. Uh, Lucy, Lucy's leaving. She's oh leaving. no, Lucy, <laughs> Just it wasn't for you. Come here, baby. Come here. You're allowed to yeah. stay. This yeah. is your house. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, you're such a good girl. Aw, <laughs> you thought Come we here. were yelling at you. Come on up. Mm. No, she's gonna lay down. Go she's girl, sorry. Aw. Also, we saw a lot of boats with just kind of really tight I was gonna say holes, but. <laughs> and this is the one that we primarily use when we're underway because it's farther aft and so there's a lot less motion here. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. This is really great footage. <laughs> I like this. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Some of our favorite things about, no. Another nice to have that we weren't really necessarily looking, well, I, I don't know, we, doesn't matter. What am I saying? Which is here, so we can tack or jive through the wind when we're using the stay so without touching anything, kind of like your main. Disappointed. <laughs>